Sure. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, before I begin, I'd like to introduce John Hambrick. He is the Senior Supervisory Resident Agent for the Federal Bureau of Investigation here in the Northern District of West Virginia. Uh, we had hoped to be joined by the state police. They were not able to be here with us today, uh, but uh, many thanks to them as well. And I'll, I'll speak more to that in just a moment. Uh, the reason why today's announcement is so important, uh, and I'll get into this before we uh, talk about particulars, uh, is because of this. One of the most important things that I can do as a United States Attorney uh, is to make sure that we keep uh, our public officials honest. Uh, and that might be a legislator, that might be a city councilman, that might be a school board member, or that might be a police officer. Uh, it's our job to be aggressive in investigating and sometimes prosecuting public officials uh, when they abuse the trust of the public. Uh, last year, around April, uh, we formed a public corruption task force and we started a public corruption hotline uh, and an email address and we've received hundreds upon hundreds of tips from the public in the Northern District uh, for just this reason, uh, to make sure that we hold our public officials accountable. Sometimes there's, there are things that go on that we find out about, and sometimes there are things we don't find out about. Sometimes there's a buzz on the street that uh, we get a little bit of information about, but we're not able to act on it and sometimes we receive information that is actionable, and that's what happened in this case. Uh, last year, when uh, I put together uh, this public corruption task force, I also restructured my office. I put some of my best people on this particular uh, area of the law, and I made it my number one criminal priority. Uh, I, as I said, I put some of my best folks on it, and they continue to work on it every day uh, to make sure that we do everything we can in this area of the law. Uh, sometimes we use sophisticated tools, uh, sometimes we use electronic surveillance, sometimes we use confidential sources. Uh, we use every tool that we have at our disposal to investigate these types of cases. Now before I give you the news uh, of today, uh, it's important for me to say this. Uh, most of the officials that we have, most of the public officials we have in Harrison County and in North Central West Virginia and in the Northern District of West Virginia are very honest, very hardworking, and they're doing it for the right reasons. Uh, unfortunately, there are always a handful of folks who don't do it for the right reason. There's a long history of public corruption in our state, and we have to stay on top of that to make sure that when it does occur, those public officials are held accountable and we're prepared to do so. And so today we are here to announce that the chief of the Clarksburg Police Department and one of his lieutenants have resigned in order to avoid federal criminal charges. Former Chief Marshall Goff and former Lieutenant Tim Smith have quit the Clarksburg Police Department in order to avoid being charged with civil rights violations, and being charged with lying and making false statements to federal agents. The actions of Goff and Smith occurred after a domestic incident that occurred in April of 2013 in Clarksburg, in which members of the Clarksburg Police Department responded uh, to this alleged domestic. Goff and Smith became involved in the response to the domestic, and the actions they took in responding to that domestic led to a separate investigation. One that was led by the FBI and the West Virginia State Police Bureau of Criminal Investigations. And so, just to be clear, there were two investigations. One of the alleged domestic battery involving a city council person and one of the response by Goff and Smith to this domestic. The resignations of Goff and Smith, as you may already know, are effective immediately. Uh, both men are barred from ever seeking or obtaining employment as a law enforcement officer. Both men have also agreed to be cooperative and truthful in the ongoing investigation of the response to this matter. As you all know, a charge has been filed in the underlying domestic battery case. That's being handled in state court by a special prosecuting attorney 
Uh, it's not being handled by this office. And as of right now, uh, the person charged in that case is innocent until proven guilty. And there's, there's nothing else for me to say about that. As I said, the case involving Goff and Smith was investigated by the FBI and the state police. And they are two of our most important partners in our efforts to fight public corruption. However, our most important partner in fighting public corruption is the public. Uh, it's the tips we receive, it's the emails, it's the phone calls, it's the hundreds of pieces of, of information we've received over the past year or so from the public. We received tips on this case. We received tips to our hotline on this particular case, and we thank the public for that. We also received phone calls, not to our tip line, but straight to our office involving this case. And uh, the people that provided us information won't be disclosed here today, but we appreciate that they came forward and provided us with information that led us to looking into this matter that led us to people who had information that could help us to investigate this matter. And so, although we don't always get uh, the best tips on our tip line, some are very good, some aren't so good. Uh, we have to vet them all. Uh, I I've been asked before in a public setting, do we investigate every single tip that comes in? Do we run off on a wild goose chase on everything we receive? And the answer is no. We have to evaluate and use our resources wisely. Uh, simply because somebody calls in and makes a complaint about uh, a county commissioner doesn't mean we're going to uh, open up an investigation and, and go full throttle. Uh, we, we do so when we feel it's appropriate and in this particular case it, it absolutely was appropriate and, and worth pursuing and the information was solid and uh, very quickly we were able to, to figure out uh, what was going on in this matter. Before I turn things over to uh, Agent Hambrick, uh, I would like to say this as far as what citizens should be on the lookout for. Um, it could be any number of things. It could be legislators who are making votes to benefit themselves or their friends. It could be a prosecutor who dismisses a case in order to help a friend, a relative, or help him, himself or herself. It could be a law enforcement official who exchanges sex for leniency. And unfortunately, we had that happen in our district not too long ago. Uh, and a deputy was indicted in state court. Uh, if an official benefits financially uh, by looking the other way with regard to natural gas drilling in our district, that's a problem. Uh, so there are many ways the public can help us. Uh, and, and I ask that the public take advantage of our tip line, our email address. Uh, sometimes I, I simply get anonymous letters, uh, and that's fine as well, through the regular mail. I, but I can say with great confidence here today that this will, be the, this will not be the last time that you hear from the efforts of our Public Corruption Task Force in, in the Northern District of West Virginia. Uh, we have uh, many other cases that we're working on, that we're looking at, and you will hear from us again uh, here in this county, here in this part of the state, and throughout the district um, in responding to tips that we receive from the public, in responding to things that we read about in the newspaper, uh, in responding to things that we see on the internet. Uh, on message boards. Uh, our information comes to us in all different ways uh, and, and as I said, uh, our most important partner is the public. And so now I'd like to turn things over to Agent Hamburg. Thank you, sir. I just want to echo some of the things that uh, United States Attorney Umfeld commented on. <laughs> this came directly from the task force effort. It is a uh, representation of a great success and, and and uh, it's, it's through this leadership that, that we're able to get things done and have an impact. We will continue to pursue these matters, and, uh, um, and yet at the same time, I want to assure you, we have a great working relationship with the state and local police. This does, as, as he commented, this does not represent a broad brush issue, but, but the specific issues are what we are addressing, and um, we still have great faith and confidence in the state and local police. Um, and I believe that's all I have to say. Any, any, uh, anything else, sir? We'll take questions if you have any. Um, are there any other council members or city officials that are being investigated? Was it just Smith and Golf? It's an ongoing investigation.
What were the allegations of what they did wrong? We're going to distribute the agreements. Uh, we agreed that they would be made public, and so they'll be provided to you. Uh, the allegations were, were two. One, that uh, there, were, there was a civil rights violation, and two, that uh, they lied to federal agents. Do the uh, agreements have more information than that? Or? The agreements are pretty general. But yeah, they, can you go into specifics then? I can't. Um, what, what, what we can say today is that the individuals who have resigned were facing federal charges involving lying to federal agents and civil rights violations, and they agreed to resign in order to avoid being prosecuted for those charges. How soon after the incident from April did this investigation start, the separate investigation? Uh, I believe it was within a week to 10 days. I'd have to go back and look at records, but generally speaking, uh, the hotline was very effective and uh, it, uh, the allegations appeared to have merit and we uh, commenced uh, assessing the, the facts. How many times have uh, officers dealt with this particular uh, person in the past, if any? with the particular charges that were on April with that particular family? Were there any other? I, I think um, uh, I'm comfortable with saying that there were other situations that uh, we're aware of um, that came out throughout the investigation.